Oh man. Yo, check it out. The m destroyed monster is here. Oh man. Uh, largest Macross toy in my collection now. Weighing in at 3.6 pounds. This takes up a lot of space. It's a huge, huge display piece. So this arrived from Ami Ami. Uh, cost was around 22,800 uh, 22, uh, yen. And, uh, oh man, shipping was uh, pretty pricey to get uh, this imported over. But uh, it's well worth um, the price. I mean, this is friggin' huge. It barely fits in the frame. Very well done. Oh, this thing just oozes badassery. Okay. Wow. Yeah, check that out. Yeah. Ooh, baby. Alright, so everything is uh, temple printed on. You have a UN Spacey logo here. Another UN Spacey logo on the barrel in red. There's a very tiny print here on the bottom, right next to this UN Spacey logo. And I don't know if you can really make it out, but it says Super Long Range Artillery Model Destroyed HWR00 Mark II Thermonuclear Reactor Max Output. 11,500 SMP. All right, more of the temple printing. You got that eye right there. Some more of that small temple printing right over here. It says danger, liquid, oxygen, stand clear of vent. You also have a similar um, temple printing right here. And in, in the anime, when this would fire, or when the monster would fire, Again, um, this is um, smoke would come out or steam would come out of these vents right here. Yeah, so some uh, warning signs or danger signs, uh, caution signs here on the back. Zero two on the back, uh, the rear hatch, and the same set of decals uh, temple printed on the other side. So again, no stickers. Um, you do have the zero two. UN Spacey logo, Mark II, and it, again, it's just friggin' huge. I mean, look at that. Okay, a few of the features for the monster. Uh, these little, um, I guess, um, columns right here, these are actually uh, sensors. So there's one here on the arm, another sensor right over here, and right here, so these can be rotated 360 degrees. Okay, same for these. These can be rotated around, and this other sensor can be rotated about 90 degrees. So again, very well done. Okay, another feature: How do the pilots? get into the monster. I never knew this before when I was watching the TV show, but there is a little ramp, a ladder, which extends down, folds down like this, and check it out, goes all the way to the floor. Okay, <laughs> so I thought that was pretty awesome. And uh, I'm sure all of you know where the pilots sit. Uh, the cockpit for the monster is right inside here. And you can remove this. It has nice and printed little windows here or monitors. Right inside there you can um, see some nice little detailing. This is a seat for the commander and the two destroyed pilots. Um, I believe they only showed the cockpit in, um, what is it, one episode? I remember seeing it in an episode of Macross 7 as well, where you had the older pilots 
uh, piloting um, the destroyed, the, the pilots from Space War One. Okay, and to reattach uh, the cockpit or the bridge uh, cockpit piece, just put it right back on. There's some features on the back as well. So, again, hatch for the rear hatch. Again, the destroyer can fire what six shells at a time. So there's little hatches right here. This is where the shells get ejected. So, boom, fires, and then the shells come out of here. Nice little detailing as well. Okay. Okay, another feature is the dozer blade. Now, when the monster fires, and uh, this was sort of seen in Macross Zero with the older generation monster, this dozer blade would come out, and um, this would sit on the ground. So, so, and this would um, relieve some of the shock from the firing of the the gun. So this would be. Um, sit into the ground and you just folds right back in actually there's a little detail in that I want to show you there is detailing underneath and it just folds right in like so and actually so let me just show you some of the detailing here on the back Okay, another neat feature is this stabilization bar on the inside. Now, you lift this part up here, and on the inside, there is a die cast bar. Okay, see right here. Swing it out. And there's little grooves where this bar can sit in. There's about one, two, three, four, five five grooves which this bar can sit in this can help with some of the weight from this top half it's resting on that the groove right here it's resting on this groove and again there's the die cast bar on the inside better shot again this is the top half so So I could raise it uh, once more. Okay, so this is uh, okay. That's at the f uh, farthest groove back, right there. This little bar. So as you can see, look at the appearance. It's raised a lot higher now. One more. Lowered it again. Okay, this is the second to the last position, and this is how it normally sits. Okay, now for the barrels, okay. Uh, these have uh, some decent articulation as well. So move them up uh, to the side, and they do hold. Okay, up, down. Okay. So you can get some pretty good movement out of uh, the cannons on the monster's back. And there's also detailing as well inside the barrel. Let's see, you can make that out just right over here. And Bandai also included these struts. Okay, so if you wanted to hold certain poses for the barrels, uh, this able, labeled C, B, and you have two sets. Okay, so I'm going to show you. They mount right here in the back. I'm going to show you how that looks in a second. Okay, and here it is with uh, these struts installed. Again, this uh, lies inside a peg right on the inside. And it's pretty stable. Uh, again, I don't think I'll be using these too often. Maybe if you want to assert, hold a, a pose where the cannons are held high. And if you don't want to worry about them sagging, um, you can do so. You, know, you can do that. The option's there. But I think I'm just going to leave them out. Uh, they're not my... Oh, 
not really my thing. I like the cannons the way they are without the um, the struts. So, again, a nice little option. And again, you do get four of them. Okay, so for articulation, um, again, there isn't much. We didn't see the <laughs> monster move around too much in the series, but uh, this little armor right here can be rotated. And as you can see here, So if you want the knees folded up, this is as far as it will go. So right about there. Okay, so extending the knee. This part swings forward here. Ah, yes. Listen to that sound. Extends here and extends here. So that is the knee fully extended. Now for the foot, now which we did see in episode 27, smashing into the deck of the carrier when it took that giant step. There is some um, foot movement, but again, minor. I wasn't expecting there to be too much uh, near the heel. Okay, and a bit of side to side, not much. Again, not much. The toe. Okay, that's about it. Again, in the bottom, check this out. A lot of the weight is here at the bottom. This is all metal right here. Metal where it, it needs to be. It's all in the right places, okay? Right here at the bottom. And uh, inside the frame, as I showed you, there's that die cast bar to help support the weight. Again, very nice detailing as well. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay, so. Okay, second, I'm just going to extend feet okay and you can get a proper a stance as well again not much okay check it out see pushed it inward and then outward okay again very nice I mean this has the right amount of articulation um, for a monster that isn't known for articulation I think it's Pretty amazing, the uh, Bandai's um, handiwork here. They knocked this one out of the park. Grand slam. Okay. Now, so for the uh, leg movement, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, backward. That's pretty impressive movement right there. Isn't that nice? And all the, rats, the ratchets are clicky. So for the arm movement, this can be rotated 360 degrees. Okay, and right his joint right here, up, and you can move it down. Okay, another joint right here, move it inward and outward. Okay, and there's another joint here where you can rotate it. 360 degrees. Oh, too much ratcheted goodness, folks. Okay, and again, same on the other side as well. Same amount of joints, same amount of heaviness. This is one huge mother. Try to fit this into your display case, folks. I dare you. You're going to need a lot of space. Okay, I just want to show you a bit more of the detailing. Check out those barrels, baby. Sweet, sweet, Mac Cross, Mecca. Okay, nice coloring as well, a nice shade of green. Again, I discussed the tempo printing, articulation, plenty of it where it needs to be. The features are great. You know you want to add this to your collection. <laughs> and just give me a quick second. Just shifted this over real quick. Here's the rig alt and the glaug. And, ooh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Again, I believe these are all of uh, Kazutaka Miyatake's um, mecha designs. 
No, we got, of course, with the Shoji Kawamori. Of course, doing all the Valkyries. Uh, I don't have access to my um, Yamato Destroid, so... Again, they'd be out of scale anyways. They'd be about this high, which they sh which uh, is incorrect. I mean, they probably if they were in correct scale. They should be around, you know, this tall. And as I said before, uh, as if you couldn't tell, uh, I have nothing but positive things to say about the monster. Uh, Bandai has uh, really done their work here. And as I pull out uh, to get a wider shot, again. Nothing, I don't can't find any faults here. I mean, the price is a little high, but you do get one massive, massive destroid. Again, this is going to be the centerpiece um, of a lot of Macross fans' collections. Um, and you'll give me one more second. All right, so now you know it's not really fair to compare it, you know, apples and oranges, but here is the. Koenig Destroid from the, I believe, what, first Macross Frontier movie. Again, this one, you know, <laughs> this one's pretty tiny. I mean, gosh, let me get a quick side-by-side -side here. Okay, so, yeah. The Koenig versus the Mark II monster. It would be nice if they made the Macross Zero Monster. I wonder if there's a market for that, but anyways. Okay, so again, this is um, been my review for the Destroid High Metal from Bandai. Again, definitely pick one of these up in your collection. Uh, you know, this could be the Holy Grail, as I said before. Uh, mine is the SDF-1. Uh, this could go right next to it. It's awesome. It's going to take up a lot of shelf space. And I uh, continue. I will continue to support the high metal lineup. Um, hopefully, um, I'll release more Destroids. As I didn't get to finish. Um, I don't have a Phalanx or a Spartan in my collection. So, yeah. So if you're a Macross fan, you'll want to add this to your collection it's got presents I mean if you have people over they're gonna want to take a look at this hold it in their hands play with it make it shooting sounds whatnot okay it's friggin awesome okay haven't glitched over the uh, macro sword like this uh, in a while but yeah Bandai's high metal destroyed monster okay I hope you enjoyed this review uh, thanks.